Hello. Hey guys. We are back. We're back. In Technicolor, in, in, in the and form of audio. More stereo than Technicolor, <laughs> but we're here nonetheless. You're welcome. Hi guys. We're, hello. Hey. Welcome back to the Mystery, Mystery Files. Files. Yeah. We are very cozy right now. I feel like we're having yes, a little sleepover right now. I know. Right now. I have, like, my whole getup on. I'm wearing, like, <laughs> Halloween stuff to the max. It's so, guys, it's so funny. She's wearing a Goosebump <laughs> shirt right now and, like, these asymmetrical <laughs> Halloween pants. Listen, they're, okay, now imagine, they're kind of like sweatpants, but one side is completely orange and the other one is, like, black and white with ghosts on it. It's kind of amazing. It's kind of really funny. <laughs> it's chaotic. And then I have slippers that say, feline spooky, and there's a cat. <laughs> And no, I have like a white blanket on that I'm wearing, kind of like a shawl. Wow, like a, sh- I'm like, a oh, shawl. A shawl. A shawl. Isn't that what's called? A sh- <laughs> it's not a shawl. A what? shawl. That's not even a word. I don't think. <laughs> Is it called a shawl? A shawl. Yeah, like a like, grandma would wear. Yeah. Yeah, a shawl. <laughs> a shawl. <laughs> I call myself a fashion expert, and I'm over here. You're like, I'm wearing a called. shaw. Anyway, it's still a blanket it is. on me. It is a blanket, it's like nonetheless. It's kind of cozy, though. We should do this more often. I, I don't know. know why. We've got our Red Bull. We've got our blankets. I have a yes. pillow behind me and my heating pad. The essentials. <laughs> so we are on episode two. two. Last week was our season five premiere. It was. We are officially in spooky season as this episode will be released officially tomorrow's october 1st and we're coming in hot yes we're ready (laughs) um (laughs) uh so last week we talked about the cecil hotel we did we did which was a crazy case it's so crazy and you just reminded me because i completely forgot earlier i literally like before before the episode guys before the episode started (laughs) she asked me what the case was well because my mind went uh what was it it's like when you get asked your favorite movie and you're like you forget everything that's literally how it is every single week i'm like i my memory everything floods at the same time watch we have like a a, of a fan come up to us or something and they're like oh my god i love your podcast and i'm like i have a podcast what's a podcast (laughs) i don't even know what a podcast is so much work they're like, I love listening to you guys. And I'm like, you listen to me? When? Where? <laughs> Wait, when? Huh? Who? How? Me? I like, Spotify? I don't know if we talked about this on the podcast before, but I remember when we were a radio show mm-hmm. at our little private art school. Yes. Um, uh, There was like those people in the cafeteria that one time was like, you're the guy from like the, uh, the, that like mystery show. Aww. And I was like, oh, I was like, people were, people were listening. They listened oh to gosh. us. Oh my gosh. It was so, like, reaffirming. I think it's just funny to imagine people, like, casually eating and just hearing our show going on. <laughs> like, like, the what chaos is that's this? ensuing. Yeah, they're like, I think I'm going to go back to my dorm. <laughs> what is happening it's the, on the um, show? It's like we're telling, like, jokes and stuff, and then, like, five minutes later, you, like, rehear it, and then it's like, <laughs> her arms were cut off, her, her ears were cut <laughs> off. I didn't even know her, her legs were cut off. <laughs> her arms were cut off. <laughs> my gosh oh my god they're like "Ooh, time to eat and i'm like bella and the witch elf <laughs> she was shoved in the tree no not bella and the witch elf i honestly don't remember much about that case at all except there was a woman in a tree well that's why i want to revisit it yeah um i don't know if we got to talk about this last week but we talked about after we aired mm-hmm. the episode but we've been thinking about doing some remasterings and some revisits of cases we don't have on the podcast so yes. if that is something you guys would be interested in let us know let at- us know the mystery files underscore on instagram on the ig my dudes yes and oh. we are also um we're also <laughs> in the talks of maybe doing some merchandise we are in the future. we are it's gonna like be a little, little bit of planning moving forward but yes. yeah so be on the lookout for that as well we're exactly. very excited we've been reaching out to artists and also if you guys have any like ideas for merch and you want to send yeah. us anything you have we'd love for you to reach out to us on instagram yes please that'd be amazing we'd love and, to you know, collaborate with people so we keep the link to our ig in the descriptions of each of our episodes so if you ever have any um opinions or ideas please let us know yeah we, we want to hear to make stuff for you guys too mm-hmm. oh i'm excited <laughs> i know i i'm just so excited to get like a crew neck that just oh. has the mystery files on it yes i i just remember last year during the summer tapes when we made those like hodgepodge <laughs> ones that yeah. out of like what was it like fabric markers yeah we had like fabric might have been even sharpies and fabric markers and we had like white t-shirts it was really fun but it was cute. chaotic it was chaotic 
chaotic. It's a it's a pajama shirt for me now. Like it's very very fun. Understandable. I think mine was like cropped, so it got very worn very quickly. I remember mine was like a little asymmetrical on one side. Like I actually do. It's, do you remember? I like showed it to yeah. you, and it was completely slanted on one side. You said I think this is right. <laughs> it's like downhill. You said it's perfect. Oh my god. <laughs> All right. Yeah. So. Yeah, as we talked about before, last week was my case, so we are back, back, back again We're with back. Tiffany for another case. Yes, this week is All my right. case, and I'm so darn excited. I'm excited, too. It's like, a case I'm, I'm also surprised we have not talked about. Like, I feel like maybe we've mentioned the idea of this case before. <laughs> well, that's what I said last week, too. Yeah, but, like, it's wacky. Like, I, I don't even know. I don't know if it's going to be a two-parter. I hope I can get it within a, a reasonable two-parter. time. We'll see. We'll see. Okay. But I'm excited. Yeah, well, do you want to get into it? Yeah, let's get into it. Do you like a little drum roll, please? Give me the drums. Okay. This week on The Mystery Files, we're talking of the mysteries of the Manson family. Oh, yeah. oh my gosh. Like, how have we not talked about the Manson family? The Manson family. Or Charles okay. Manson. How the heck? Well, you mentioned it. I should have picked up on that because you asked me. If, like, the Cecil Hotel was connected to that at all, and yeah. I was not sure. Well, I think I oh, just wow. completely forgot about it, but I'm like, I don't know why we haven't done this ever. Wow. Because there's a lot. There's oh, a lot. Oh, boy. But, yeah. Let's get into it. <laughs> Let's get into crazy. it. Okay, so. The Manson family committed one of the most reveled crimes in modern American history, the Tate-LaBianca murders, which brutally ended the life of actor Sharon Tate, who was the wife of director Roman Polanski. So when she was eight and a half months pregnant, along with four of her friends and her gardener's son, they all got murdered, basically. Oh, my God. So crazy, gruesome thing. And then the next day, married couple Lino and Rosemary LaBianca were murdered by the Manson family in equally brutal fashion, this time with Charles Manson himself helping to commit the crime. So the cult had hoped to frame a black man for the killings to spark race riots in Los Angeles, which they believed would usher in the apocalypse. Oh my god. So there was all this stuff with like a race war going on and they wanted to like create riots and like, Just like create an apocalypse. Just like chaos. They wanted to wreak havoc everywhere. Whoa. Yeah. What? That's just, you it's just like talked in like 60 seconds and that was just already s- so, so visual, much chaotic, sad. Wow. Yeah. I, I actually, I'm not gonna lie, I don't know a lot about like the Manson family, mm-hmm. uh, surprisingly. You said yeah. like a cult. They're very culty like bad oh. cult and like i oh, feel wow. like i didn't even really know much about it i feel like my introduction to like any of the manson stuff fully was remember that movie that came out a few years ago it was like once upon a time in hollywood mm-hmm. that was like manson family stuff i didn't really like that movie oh. because it was directed by tarantino and he's a gross man oh. but the movie did have stuff about Whoa. like the manson family and everything so i was interested in that history what year was this in this like whole Oh, this all in general? It was in the 60s. But there's, like, certain years things happen. I'm pretty sure it was 60s. So it gets chaotic. There's, like, mystery surviving it. So I'm going to go into, like, the history of everything and then, like, different mysteries surrounding all of it. Whoa. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) It's chaos. So. That's just, like. Yeah. That's just, like, so awful. They, like, tried to, like, frame. I know. Like, a black man with that. Especially if it was the 1960s because that's, Mm -hmm. like, like like the end of segregation stuff that is crazy it's so sad well i didn't even realize there was stuff like associated with like race like i know the time like even now there's messed up stuff going on with race but like i didn't realize they were trying to frame like a black man for all of this that is i'm like that breaks my heart wow it's so sad do they like dive into like who it was like at all well there's different like people inside like the manson family so they have like almost like a roster of like people there's like a bunch of people who like followed charles manson and they became his like the manson family oh my god yeah so we'll get into all of it there's a lot to unpack here so while the facts of this case are well documented the manson manson family lies at the center of many other mysteries that will unfold throughout this episode So the history of the Manson family and the murders are coming up. So, (laughs) starting with Mr. Charles Manson himself. He was born in 1934 to a teenage mother, and Charles Manson, his early childhood and young life was spent bouncing around between relatives and later in and out of institutions in the Midwest. So in his early 20s, he married twice and fathered a son. 
married Manson, twice. Married twice, and he's a whole dad. Damn, he's got commitment issues and a son. <laughs> and they're the same thing. No, I'm, <laughs> I'm not a son. How would I know? <laughs> I mean, we saw how he turned out. I don't know. So Manson was considered uh, so thoroughly institutionalized by authorities that upon his 1967 release from a California prison, he asked the warden if he could stay. So I no. feel like it was sort of like a thing that he was so like in this regiment of like, I am here in he prison. He probably felt like powerful though in the prison. Yeah. He probably had like a complex made up. Oh, probably. He's probably like, I, belong. like I am the like, person of I this prison. I am God of this yeah. prison. Mm-hmm. That's crazy. Like just being in that headspace to be so institutionalized that you're like, this is all that I am. I am here forever. Please let me stay here. Whoa. Like that's psychotic. How many years was that? I'm not sure how many years he was in there. But wow. it said he's been in and out of institutions for, like, a long time. Oh, so he probably, like, asks every time almost, mm-hmm. probably, like, do I have to go back into, like, the real yeah. world? Yeah, and I feel wow. like that's probably a very similar feeling, feeling to other people who are in prison. Like, mm-hmm. just, like, sort of, not, like, wanting to be, like, tracked there necessarily, but they get so, like, used to the regimented lifestyle that it mm-hmm. would probably be hard for them to be released if they were wow. in there for such a long time. That's crazy. It's like a culture shock, I think. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So, yeah, he, like, asked the warden if he could stay. But uh, instead, Manson migrated to Berkeley and then San Francisco, uh, cities that became flooded with young people looking to embark on a new way of life. So he was going to places that, like, oh, had He was going people. to, like, ca- big spots in, like, California and mm-hmm. stuff. Wow. Yeah. I didn't even realize it was, like, a, um, like a West Like a hot spot. End. Thing. Like, not West End. That's <laughs> <laughs> United Kingdom. You said, ah, like, just girly Like, things. the West Coast. Like, yeah. I didn't realize. Wow. Mm-hmm. Like, just a hot spot for, like, young people, hip things. So, mm-hmm. an older figure among the crowd, he amassed a small group of followers that almost were entirely made of women, and in 1968, headed along with several female followers to Los Angeles to pursue a music career, having learned to play the guitar in prison. So he learned how to play guitar in prison is now Where like... Where did he get a guitar? <laughs> I mean, I, don't I guess know. they have like hobby programs and stuff. Yeah. So he learned how to play guitar in prison and now he got out and he's like, yeah, I have this following. I'm going to like I'm be, be popular artist. in music. Wow. Like he's trying to jumpstart his music career. Basically. Wow. Being released and, out of prison. I mean, you said like he was doing this stuff with like the younger like folks like trying to get like a following with them and stuff. Mm-hmm. Have you seen the meme that has the oh, guy no. with the skateboard and he's like, how do you do fellow kids? And it's this Ew, guy in skateboard like outfit. Guy. Yeah, it's the old guy. Oh no. <laughs> That's him. It literally is. It's him is. walking into like um a like a uh, vegetarian shop in San Francisco. <laughs> he's like. <laughs> how are you cool kids and cats do? <laughs> he's like, you guys got some kombucha today. It's pretty Ew. cool. Do you know I learned to play guitar? I hate that Don't, so don't worry about where. Don't but worry like, about where, it's fine. But, like, I can play guitar. I'm the coolest I'm, I'm guitar I'm a bassist player. of, like, I'm a, I'm a band. bassist, I'm a vocalist, and a rock band. <laughs> I, I mean, it's just me. But, it's just like... me, but I am everything. So, like, be my best friend. Because I'm cool. I'm old, but, like, old's in. And it's fine. <laughs> so this guy, he's getting his people. So Manson's tools of persuasion were that lax social codes of the late 1960s, in which runaway hippies mingled freely with Hollywood royalty. And so his ability to tell others what they wanted to hear, both of which he parlayed into a friendship with Dennis Wilson, the drummer for the Beach Boys. Oh. So he's becoming friends with all sorts of people, and he finds this key person that's already in like, Hollywood. Boys. He got one of the Beach Boy boys. He got Mr. Dennis Wilson. So he's making his connections for his plans. Didn't we, didn't we talk about the Beach Boys last week, too? Not on the podcast, but afterwards. Didn't we talk about the Full House episode with the Beach Boys? Yes. Why did we? Why did we talk <laughs> I don't about know. that? What? Oh, I, yes, we did. Yeah. We were talking about uh, um, uh, what's that? Joey Gladstone and Dave um Collier? Alanis uh, Morissette. How she yes. wrote uh, uh, the song uh, about him. You ought to know. You ought to know. You ought to know about him. Uh, yeah. About Joey freaking Gladstone. <laughs> ah. Yeah. So Beach Boys are just coming into history here, always as they should. Yeah. So, that's so funny when you're talking about them. But, uh, through Wilson, Manson met other music industry players and grew increasingly fixated on stardom, all the while exercising greater and greater control over the group that became known as the Manson family. So, it's getting oh. crazy now. So, he's got his family gathered. Um, he was, as investigative journalist Jeff Gowen put in th- this book called Manson, The Life and Time of Charles Manson, he called him the wrong man in the right place at the right time. 
So oh. it's all about how he weaseled him way, his way into this lifestyle at Almost the perfect like, time. Like, it was the perfect, like, the world, like, culture needed a rock star. And he yeah. just happened to fit the Like, he bill, kind of just, but... like, weaseled himself and he said, oh, here's some Hollywood people. And it all kind of fell into place of what he was try- like trying to get. Like, everything he needed mm-hmm. fell into place, but it should have been for someone completely Yeah, different. it should have been someone who Whoa. wasn't him, literally anyone. So, after the family members behind the August 1969 murders were apprehended, Manson was put on trial for murder along with them. He didn't do any of the actual killing, but Prosecutor Vincent Boglioski argued that the family did everything Manson ordered them to do, including murder. So, one of California's longest-standing prison inmates, Manson, actually died in November 2017. And I did not know he was that old. Yeah, I didn't know that was that recent. Whoa. Like... He was on this earth still when I was alive. That just feels strange. Wow. <laughs> yeah. So, so, yeah. Wow. That's great. So, like, he, did, was he found guilty for any of that stuff? Or was it, like, because he didn't, like, actually do the murders himself? Um, I'm the murders were apprehended. So, I don't know. He was put on trial okay. for it. But I don't know if he was actually guilty I or not. I feel like at that point, I don't know. It's just, like, strange because I feel like they would have wanted, like, some type of cease and desist or something that's mm-hmm. like, hey, like, you shouldn't be making, like, music or anything, like, anymore. Like, I don't know. Yeah. That's, like, so crazy to me. It's, like, even if you didn't do it, like, whatever mm-hmm. you are doing is causing these fans to be yeah, like, manic. Not even fans. Like, literally, like, like devote people that followers. Yeah, people that have come to you Whoa. to, like, devote themselves. But also, he was guilty, I guess, because he was in prison. So I'm assuming he was found guilty because it said he was like oh, one of yeah, California's right. that, longest that standing prison mates. That checks out. I was like, wait a second. He was definitely guilty if he was in prison. So multiple times. Yeah, multiple times. Longest no. standing guy. So he probably gets like whole albums ready. Like <laughs> he's preparing them. I have never heard one of his songs ever. Me either. It's for the best. Oh. Nobody has like some hypnotic thing in there. Become the Manson family. And I'm like, no, mm. sir. I don't want that. You're like, icky. No. <laughs> no, you can't make me. <laughs> So, now we're going to delve into just, like, the Manson family, trying to figure out what their sitch is. So, in the public's imagination, the Manson girls, and they also became known as, like, the Manson family, loomed almost as large as Manson himself. Mostly young women in their late teens and early 20s, Manson family members were, in the late 1960s, not especially unusual. White, middle-class women all over the country were headed for cities like San Francisco and Los Angeles, inspired by other hippies to turn on, tune in, and drop out. So it was more like a free Oh, that was lifestyle. in the time of, like, um, like hippies and, like, yeah. peace, love, and... Mm-hmm. Whoa, yeah. Like, just very, like, free lifestyle. So like, it's like, more and, and more people are, like, more young people are coming to those mm-hmm. areas. Wow. They're like, I don't want to work. I just want to, like, live. Like, it's just... Whoa. The kind of lifestyle they were looking... Ha- these cities had it, so they went there. And Manson used his female followers to lure other men to both join the group and to support it. It was several of the women that initially met Dennis Wilson and brought Manson to his home. Oh, so, like they, were they like groupies or something like that? Like I, for a show, maybe? I feel like they might have been, and they kind of what? just rang Manson in with all wow. of this. So like his people. That is so yeah. manipulative. Mm-hmm. Whoa. But also like the idea that like, I feel like you can definitely see the beginning of a cult happening here because yeah. Manson, like, getting his, like, quote, female followers to try to get other people to other join the Other people group. to, like, yeah, like, become basically members or fans. Yeah. Like, like that's strange to me. Because I don't even know how, like, musically, like, out in the world he was even at this point. Like, mm-hmm. I think it was just people he kind of, like, snuck in before he even had anything out there to wow. show, really. I don't know. I don't know much about his music stuff, but I don't think he was big enough to already have big fans. It was just the way he persuaded people the to like The way he like persuaded him. people to like hear his messages and hearing mm-hmm. what he was saying. And I'm like to blindly follow. Ugh, wow. Disturbing. So Manson and the family bounced around Los Angeles, eventually set in, settling at Spawn Ranch, which was an old film and television set at the Western San Fernando Valley. So it was like this whole like set basically they lived on. It uh-huh. was like set up as a ranch. So at Spawn. Whoa, like, like a yeah. farmhouse? Like, I think it was a bunch of different buildings. It was like a huge ranch. So there's like places people could live on the ranch. From what I know. Wh- yeah. So like, so like do- Dolly World, but for the Manson family. I mean, I don't think it was that nice. <laughs> I feel like, I think you're imagining like a very glorified, if it's Dolly World, I 
bet it's huge. I don't think, <laughs> I don't think it was that glamorous. I'm not gonna it's lie. like it's like there's one <laughs> there's like <laughs> one hole dug in the ground as a toilet. Mm-hmm. Um, everyone is eating um, uh, baked beans from the can. Um, yeah, not the only entertainment is um, uh, the one book of Romeo and Juliet they have on <laughs> file. They said this is your entertainment, friends. I'm looking <laughs> up a picture of what Spawn Ranch looks like because I'm pretty sure from what I've seen of it, yeah, it's like a very Google search of the day rundown thing. Like it kind of just looks, it looks kind of decrepit. See. Here, I'll show you a picture. I'll turn around. Turn I'll do a little around d- audio you. description. Yes. Um, I'm gonna get a wide. It's this one's black and white. <laughs> You probably can't see because you're you. Uh, Love you the most. Are you making fun of my eyesight? I mean, you said earlier can't read subtitles on a TV. Don't look at me squinting right now. He's squinting. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Like it, it looks just, like a steel mill. Like it looks very run down. Here's one picture in color. That was a loud noise. It's not any better in color. It's like the no. exact same feeling. It's like just it's kind just of a dread. Bunch of buildings on a ranch. Because I feel like it's not glamorous. It's just, it's just a ranch that was used for TV sets. But... That's where they basically, like, laid down their life and oh. lived. Creepy. So, um, at Spawn Ranch, Manson exercised total domination over the group. So, <laughs> that's already a great start. That's, no. like, a not great sentence. No, it's not. Because he's, that's literally what he did. Uh, members were reportedly forbidden from wearing eyeglasses or carrying money. And in this book called member of the family my story of charles manson life inside his cult and the darkness end of the 60s uh one of manson's followers named diane lake who was just 14 when she met manson in the first place so she was young she detailed long nights of lectures in which manson instructed others at the ranch to take lsd and listen to him preach about the past present and future of humanity that so, sounds insanely boring yeah <laughs> like, i mean but if someone's probably tripped on lsd they're like you're god like they yeah, are that's, probably just like, like it's a manipulation thing to like kind yeah. of like open the door like not open the door but like get them to have their um like all their like guards down mm-hmm. so it would make it easier to give an opinion on something and internalize yeah. that like people are more oh easy to God. fall susceptible of it especially like with lsd or something like that because i feel like oh if yeah they're looking at him thinking he's some person they have to follow his word it's almost like an enlightenment in like a cult they're yeah. like, oh my gosh, like, this is like such new, something new. It's crazy. We have to follow. He's speaking right. the word of life oh to us. Oh my God. I feel like after a while, though, I would get so bored of that. Like, oh mm-hmm. my God, I don't want to do this. I but also, if people are on drugs that left. much, I would have huh? simply left. <laughs> Imagine being like, I'm trying to think of the best way to think of it. Imagine being so like gung ho about something and so deep into it. Mm. And like, you love this person so much. You respect everything they say. And then they give you LSD. So you're already hopped up on whatever they do. Oh, like you're already like, they're like, you admire them so much. They're already like, yeah, they're dedicated. So they're like, oh my gosh, you're literally everything to me. Yeah. I believe everything you say about the future of humanity. Wow. (laughs) It's disturbing. So, some of the family remained loyal to Manson even after he was sentenced to death, which was later converted to life in prison when the state of California overturned the use of death penalty. So, he died in there, but he wasn't sentenced to death. Mm. Uh, In 1975, one of Manson's earliest followers named Lynette, or Squeaky was her nickname, attempted to assassinate President Gerald Ford. Oh my god. But obviously failed. Her gun jammed and she was quickly, like attacked by the secret service how have i never heard of that before i didn't hear of it either it was probably because it was a failed attempt whoa because her gun got jammed and then they attacked her for trying to kill the president so oh my god yeah do do you know like when and where like um it doesn't say specifically but whoa uh, it's crazy so his dedicated follower decided she was gonna try to do this that's i never heard of that before Mm mm-hmm Wow. Like, his followers are just on something crazy. And this was after he was, like, sent to prison. Like, they were still, like... Yeah, I believe so. 1975. Wow. I think he... No, yeah. He was, mm-hmm. like, in there by now from what you were saying. That's... Yeah. Wow. So they were still, like, esteemed followers. Like, he'll be out one day or, like, we mm-hmm. will, like... Like, we have to vengeance. carry out what he wanted Whoa, for like, us. the legacy he intended for. Mm-hmm. Oh, my... Ew. Imagine being that, like into it because i've like watched a lot of different like cult documentaries and like Mm -hmm. different videos about it and like these people are just so like fixated on what they're supposed to do that they're blinded by everything else they think this is their purpose have we ever covered a cult before i I don't don't know i think i think we were going to the one time 
I think we you were turned, going to. I think I turned it away because it was too big of a case or something like yeah. that. Because that's when we were back on like a 40 minute like time mm-hmm. limit, I think. And then I also kind of, I usually steer clear of cults wow. because a lot of them are sexual and that's yeah, not our show. That, not but at all. But this, I don't think there, I don't think there was much association with like wow. sexual stuff in this. That might have been that I'm completely unaware of, but a lot of this is just like, yeah. Other I guess crazy the reason I'm asking because I feel like this is a good time to like have an open commentary about because it, it's yeah. like, um, like cults are so hard because it's like one of those things it's like this person makes you seem like everything your life is worth is based on this like it's your yeah. legacy it's your destiny and mm-hmm. like all your friends are in that and most of these people who go to cults like end up like losing loved ones because of it oh, so yeah. it's all they have mm-hmm. so it's like just so hard to leave a cult because it's like um, it's almost like the peer pressure of like if you leave mm-hmm. you're a disappointment and you're losing everything that gave you confidence happiness and joy at one point oh definitely but it's not real it's like it's not like um, your brain is so fogged from like all the information they've been putting into you it's so um surface level yeah it's not like true reality of like love or affection it's just for an agenda to be fulfilled Mm -hmm. that's and then you mentioned something interesting you said like it'd be hard to like if you were to be inside of a cult to like leave your family and everything like mm-hmm. if they were outside of the cult but i've seen a lot of cults like i think it's a lot of mormon stuff can be culty and mm-hmm. like people have to escape it but a lot of their family are like they grew up inside of this yeah like they're already growing up yeah. inside of it and so, so it's to like, like change, double hard you have to leave your entire family you have to you've completely ever completely start over mm-hmm. and that's just so yeah. crazy to me and the easy just... thing is they try to make sure they're not educated enough to know outside of it in a cult. Mm-hmm. They try to, like... Keep them in as much as they can. Yeah. And that's, like, the hard part is, like, you hear this person who you think is the most, like... Like, especially, like, Charles Manson. Like, they yeah. probably thought he was so... Especially with, like, the drugs and stuff. They thought... They probably thought he was so educated and, mm-hmm. like, so smart and genuine. And in reality, he really wasn't. But that's yeah. what they were taught. Especially because they're young, too. They're young. They're impressionable. They just moved to a new they're city. They're just starting their new lives. Like, and that's... they're looking for friends. They're looking for a community. Wow. Here's the community, but little do you know, it's a exactly. dark, dark thing. It's just so, it's just so crazy to me how that, like, works. So it's probably, like, even after he went to prison, it was one of those things, like, this is all I have left. How do I, like... Mm-hmm. move forward without him yeah and then imagine even how hard it would be to an es- to escape something like that because imagine yeah. you start to realize oh my gosh like this group that i'm in is starting to yeah. talk of like this really scary stuff but if you try to escape you might be especially someone for they a target. group that's been like like has done heinous crimes for yeah decades. if you leave they're gonna be like they know our secrets we have to kill them we have to keep yeah, the secrets exactly. inside our family with the people we yeah. can quote trust like yeah it's a whole thing yeah and, like cults are so scary like it's weird that they're still relevant today like it's still a thing people oh yeah fall susceptible to there's so, so many, many like cults you hear about nowadays too and just like mm-hmm. even like the way like film and tv betrays it too it's just so it's horrifying it's horrifying watch midnight mass horrifying <laughs> you'll see a midnight mass plug there's some things i don't know you get to watch it but anyway Back to our little Casey case, even deeper. So now we're going to talk about, like, the different connections that Manson had made. So Manson's popularity grew due to the connections he had made with a number of wealthy and influential people in Los Angeles. So through Dennis Wilson, the good old drummer of the Beach Boys, uh, he became acquainted with record producer Terry Melcher, who was the son of actress Doris Day and boyfriend of model and actress Candace Bergens. These are like big people. No all way, the time. Doris Day. Mm-hmm. Doris Day. So he's got a lot of these big connections just right off the bat. So at one point, the daughter of actress Angela Lansbury was a family hanger on and thought she wasn't an official member. So she used her mother's credit cards to buy the family's food and clothing. So she was like no. trying to help this group. They were sponsors. She was a sponsor. She was essentially a sponsor. She's like, oh, I'm going to give you guys some money so you can like live comfortably. Because I'm rich and I can just use my mom's stuff. So, like, she was given in to, like, all this stuff. The mom looking at the credit card statement later that day. She said, you paid what to who? You said, who the the what? Who is a Manson? So, uh, Melcher and Bergen. We live live in a mansion, not a Manson. (laughs) Manson? More like Manson, because I'm rich. (laughs) Because I am filthy rich. I'm filthy rich. Unlike (laughs) you. You're just my daughter. Ah! You get my scraps. 
Yes. Uh, <laughs> uh, I'm so glad I'm not rich. Sometimes. Same. Sometimes. Same. I think it'd get to my head. No, I don't think it might. No. You have a lot of clothes already. I can't imagine I'm, you I'm on, rich uh, in clothing. out I showed, of a budget. I showed Logan my closet <laughs> today, and there's so much in there, guys. It's piled high. You need Marie Kondo to come on in. The thing is, I just got rid of a, like a trash bag full of clothes like two weeks ago, <laughs> and I still have that. Oh All of that's all mine. <laughs> so, uh, Melcher and Bergen lived at the house uh, that Tate would eventually rent with her husband, director Roman Polanski. And Gouin uh, posits that the house represented mansions, wow, mansions, Manson's <laughs> rejection by the musical establishment. He courted Melcher as a patron and even hosted the producer at Spawn Ranch. So he's getting all this stuff at the ranch. He's getting he's sponsors getting after this... sponsors with the connections mm-hmm. with like extremely popular people too. Yeah. Very powerful people, especially in that like a whole thing. like music producer. He might wow. be set. Like he's getting very hopeful for all of this stuff to come mm-hmm. with all these connections. So where Melcher politely listened to Manson and the family perform. So like they're listening to the family perform and they're just experiencing it all. So Manson pinned a great deal of hope on his connections with Wilson and Melcher. And it's widely believed that once it became clear that the two men weren't going to significantly advance his music career, um, that he became increasingly focused on violence. Oh, so no. they started to lose interest, and then he got very dark. Very angry yeah. because he didn't get a chance to receive more power. Yes. So oh, he started no. to focus on violence after that. That was kind of like a huge tipping point for him. Um, and, like that so that was the breaking point yeah for like one of everything them. like he was already messed up enough but like that was the bad bad Whoa. tipping point for him so then uh prosecutor vincent bugliosi in his exhaustive attempt to put together a motive for the family's killings landed on manson's obsession with what he called a helter skelter which is taken from the beatles song of the same name so oh. manson told his followers that the white album was further evidence his theories about the end of the world were correct so from a Beatles stuff, album? From a Beatles album. Well, because there's some connections with Beatles stuff, too, I'm pretty sure, with mm-hmm. all this. So, Helter Skelter in Manson's verbiage was the pending race war that would see thousands die and force the family to, to disappear to underground caves. So, he had all these crazy conspiracies. Un- did you say underground caves? Mm-hmm. So What? That's basically the apocalyptic thing we were talking about earlier. Yeah. Like, he would basically, that whole race war that was going on, he would, like, break it all up. <laughs> So everything would basically go to heck. Like, everything starts burning. People are dying. That Then the Manson family would be, like, disappearing to underground caves where they were safe. Was that, like, do you think, like, the caves were at the ranch? I don't know or if they ever like actually made situation? the caves. I think that was, like, their... Oh, that's the plan. I think that was their plan. They Whoa. might have actually made it. I have no idea. But that was their plan for, like, an apocalyptic <gasps> type thing. That's crazy. Bas- basically. Which is chaotic. What? That he so was, they were like, planning, like... Mm-hmm. the end of times yeah whoa okay that whoa that makes the prologue seem like make a lot more sense yes like there's a lot of different things but like how we talked about at the beginning that he was like going to blame like killing people on like a black man mm-hmm. like i think their plan was to basically do all these murders and like frame like african-american people to, absolutely like, not. which is totally disgusting and it was just to spin it to like make the race war a huge, uh, even bigger tipping point, so wow. everyone just like went against each other, killed everyone, and then, and then like Manson that would like rises. cause like at least in their mind it would cause like a pol- like even a higher political uprise or something yes. based on how they wanted this to be portrayed. Mm-hmm. And oh then their my God. thing was like, I feel like I don't know if I'm getting this right, but I feel like it would basically be the same idea of like the Manson family would live because they were like the chosen ones. Almost. They were like, the chosen ones of like their whatever. Yeah, no, because I, they were hiding underground. And everything else went. Downhill. I fully agree. Like, they probably mm-hmm. were expecting the ends of times to happening, and then yeah. they could start anew when they... Were they expecting, like, the entire world to, like, be completely I have no died idea. off, and then they would rebuild it? I have no idea, but I can't imagine what would happen if it's actually worked for them to blame. That? I I, I am... Tr- I truly... That mm-hmm. is the most out-of-pocket yeah. thing I have ever heard in my entire life. Mm-hmm. That's crazy. I'm like, oh, that's disgusting. Especially, like... Even at that time, like, all the, like, stuff with segregation, everything was, like, really coming in hot. Yeah. Like, we still have so many race issues even today in America, all around the world. But, like, to do it at that time. Yeah. It, it would have been very bad. Oh, my because God. Because we don't have 
Mm, so there not. was like records of this you said like records of like this plan and everything i'm pretty i'm not sure exactly up. what the records are but i know that was like part of their plan and definitely all probably along. like word of mouth too like mm-hmm. of like for the other people or, like, like he probably was things. like preaching this kind of stuff with the whole like um yeah. the drug trip mm-hmm. this was probably part of his preaching yeah like place oh the blame on these God. people oh my god and i'm like that, that is... literally breaks my heart so much that like that's crazy. not fair crazy like, blame it on the stupid white people, because that's what? literally oh them doing god, it. Oh my god, that's so bigoted, too. Mm-hmm. Wow. Oh, I hate white men. Except for you, Logan. Aww. Wow. Aww. Wow. Aww. Back to the cave. <laughs> You're getting a little too, uh... <laughs> You're getting a little too gratified over a here. too gratified. Bring him down. <laughs> okay, so eventually, Mr. Manson's musical aspirations had largely come to nothing, and his Hollywood connections Good. had died... And uppled him to shift focus and tell the family that they might have to begin helter skelter themselves, which is basically their whole apocalyptic plan. Um, oh. So they would commit savage crimes in upscale neighborhoods that they were planning to blame on people of color. Oh. So that's when all of the crime, like a mm-hmm. lot of the crimes, come into place. So we'll talk about some of the Manson crimes. On the night of August 8th, 1969, Manson family members uh, named Tex Watson, Patricia Krenwinkel, Susan Atkins, and Linda Kazabian, who would later turn state's witness against the others. So they are later are going to be a whole thing against mm-hmm. each other. But they drove to Tate and Polanski's home, and the eight months pregnant Tate, who appeared in 1967's Valley of the Dolls, was considered one of most Hollywood's most promising up-and-comers, was relaxing at home with her friends, and even, like, celebrity hairstylist Jay Sebring, coffee heiress Abigail Folger, and Folger's husband, well, boyfriend at the time, Wojtek oh. uh, Frykowski, they were all there. Uh, none of them had tangible connection to Manson or the family, other than being physically in the house previously occupied by someone Manson knew, who was Terry Melcher, who was one of the people with the music guys. Oh, with that the rejected two producers? Him. Oh, Yeah, so wow. they live in his house now. Like oh Tate lived so it in has this guy's nothing house. to do like that's the only reason they're going to that house yeah but, like they had no idea that like there mm-hmm. was a move yeah Whoa. like i think they were randomly going to people's houses and this i don't know if they meant to go to like this Terry i'm sure Melcher's like with house. something so culty like this they, they weren't able to like dox mm-hmm. everybody they were like they terry needed. lived here and then they stumble upon all of these people like casually hanging out oh, so no. then in helter skelter uh the book uh bugliosi writes that a witness from the prosecution described the March 1969 day on which Manson came to the house looking for Melcher and found Tate on the porch instead. Um, and in the book it says, there could be no question that Charles Manson saw Sharon Tate and she him, writes Bugliosi. So he realized that that wasn't, that was Tate. That wasn't, mm-hmm. what's his face? So Tate and her friends all died at the hands of Watson, Crewinkle, and Atkins, as oh did Stephen God. Parent, a teenage friend of the house caretaker who happened to be pulling up in the driveway as the killers arrived. So some random kid who's a caretaker for the house got killed just because he happened to pull into the driveway at the same time as the killers, which That's is so crazy. sad. Well, it's like it's like one of those things that they like uh, just it's just like that whole it's like almost like the opposite of like how you said like right, right person, place. right time. Yeah, it's wrong place, wrong time. Yeah, that's complete. Wow. And, like, the fact that he still went through with, like, the plan, yeah. even though it had nothing to do with them. Mm-hmm. Oh. Well, because they were just like, the oh, we're just going to fill out our that. helter-skelter plan and take I everyone down. I think, I know this is only the first case, but I didn't realize how many, like, iconic names and people, like, were affected, mm-hmm. like, by this in that time. And this was, like, um, like, I think this was, like, resurgence of Hollywood. This wasn't the classic era. Yeah. But, like, this is, like, the resurgent era This is, like, some big Hollywood people. Like, even, like, wow. Sharon Tate, huge actress. Yeah. And then her husband, Rowan Polanski, who is a really good director. Weird guy. Totally weird guy. But he's a pretty good director. <laughs> wow. But, That's crazy. Like, all these crazy people. And this is, like, the heiress of Folgers. Yeah. I, I was, like, I had no clue. No idea. When you no. said When you said, when you were talking about, like, the coffee, like, heiress people, I was, like, who is this going to be? And you said Folgers. And I went, You were, like, party oh? me? excuse me yeah like these huge people That's in history crazy. just completely killed just because manson oh uh, just because he had just so much mm-hmm. uh like um he just had a lot of unjustified issues. rage honestly unjustified unjustified rage crazy issues yeah should have kept being institutionalized he, the warden probably should have listened when he begged to stay just, just stay saying. there learning learning the guitar yeah keep learning your guitar stay in prison uh so uh 
The very next night, the same group of family members, plus Leslie Van Houten and Manson himself, set out to commit more murders. So they drove up to the house of grocery business executive Lino LaBianca and his wife Rosemary in the Los Feliz area of Los Angeles. Las Bian Wait, La Bianca was totally unknown to the Manson family. Some of its members had reportedly been to a party in the neighborhood. According to Bugliosi, the La Biancas were chosen at random after several hours of driving around upscale Los Angeles neighborhoods. No way. So, they're dead. They, like, like, they just, like, spinned, like, a wheel and just, like, pick? Mm -hmm, at random. Wow. But, like, that's also crazy to me. You mentioned that they were, like, at a party in that neighborhood before, too. Like, that's, yeah. like, that's, like, almost like they were like trying to build information which mm -hmm. is why i mentioned like they probably were able to dox yeah. so many people because they were building this yeah information for such long periods like they of knew where like the cultural quote hot spots were wow like we went to a party here must be a lot of people so like that's like yeah some of the most quote famous murders i mean it's not hard to find like a party in los angeles yeah. either honestly like mm -hmm. and like find information about a lot of people like, yeah that. that's crazy like they can just totally hone in but those are like the most famous murders that happened from the manson family like mm -hmm. i'm sure there's a ton more but that's yeah. like the main janes the of, main ones like, that are like so sad wow so all of that but now we're going to actually get into like different manson family like mysteries associated with the manson oh. family things that have been left unsolved unknown theories Ooh. like that kind of stuff Oh my goodness. So, the Manson family lies at the center of many other mysteries, as well including several similar but unsolved murders. Other stories about the Manson family have circulated for years, including several conspiracy theories that make them agents of the CIA or members of a secret Satanist network, or both. Well, yeah, so, just I, I crazy, both. crazy stuff. And this list looks at some of the most compelling unsolved mysteries and conspiracy theories surrounding Charles Manson and his cult of killers. So, Whoa. yes. So, we're going to get into the first little mystery we have here. So, some think the Manson family murders were a CIA conspiracy, oh. which is wacky. So, almost no one disputes that Manson and his followers are directly responsible for the Tate LaBianca murders. The physical evidence against them is too strong to argue that they didn't physically do it. But some people think it doesn't stop there. A popular conspiracy theory holds the Manson's drugs were being supplied by the CIA and that Manson himself was a product of the infamous MK Ultra program, what? which was supposedly designed to produce mind-controlled assassins. So why would the CIA do this? To discredit the 1960s countercultural movement and some claim that it would make all hippies and communes seem dangerous. What? So they really? kind of wanted it to be like a control thing to society. Oh, is and this like, kind of like... um? The same topic, uh, not not the same, but almost like the same idea that Polybius was supposed to be. I was just going to gonna say, like the oh, mind control wow. stuff, definitely. Wow. And I feel like I could definitely see this. Like if the CIA were to choose anyone for something like this, it's him. Because mm -hmm. I feel like if anything, he's been in institutionalized. He's had a lot of issues already. Big influencer as well, mm -hmm. through and through with all of that. Like wow. I could see it. It would make a lot of sense on how he's able to distribute so much drugs wow i mean yeah people. like how is he oh my god i didn't even think of that like mm -hmm. how did he even get enough like lsd to even like give that yeah. amount out for his preachings if he did have like a big mm -hmm. cult fall that's crazy unless like he genuinely had a really he had enough money to get all of this or he had people giving it to oh him oh my god i feel like i could just feel my brain going up a couple percentage points yeah whoa that's wacky to me but just the idea of the cia being in charge of all this why does the cia keep doing mind control stuff they keep, like what just, is wrong with the cia hey, they come knocking like, at our door calm down maybe is it calm down over here <laughs> they break through our windows <laughs> i live I at hear a, beep. a cia, CIA. Open CIA. Up. <laughs> we're at your door i'm like oh, are you guys here for the podcast no we're here to take you to jail You're going to prison for mind control <laughs> I'm and then we come back in the minds. next episode. We're like, hi, guys. This is our CIA appreciation episode. I thought you were going to go the direction that, hi, we're live from prison. <laughs> I'm like, oh, okay. They wouldn't let us have our show in prison. No, I, I wish. Maybe they would. <laughs> would they? No, what, like, would they? I'm, I'm going to look it up. No. no. <laughs> will they? Can, can you have. You... Will they? Let's do that. Google will get it. Will they let you do podcasts in prison? 
Let me know, Google. Can we do it? Oh, can prisoners listen to podcasts? Can they make one? Yeah. If they can uh, listen to podcasts, they can probably make one. Will they let you record pod? That's probably a better question to ask mm. Google. Record podcasts in prison. Nah, they don't got nothing from me. Mm, so it's probably a no. Mm. So let's try to not go to prison anytime soon. So <laughs> Why? Yeah. <laughs> that be... that, uh, that plan we were going to do to steal like that one diamond from that one museum. <laughs> wink, wink. Can't go through with wink, it now. Wink, wink. Darn. <laughs> wink, wink, nudge, nudge. Wait, have you heard of that show or seen it yet? The Only Murders in the Building? Really good show. It's no. on Hulu. It's like a murder that happens in the building and these people create a podcast to like figure out who the murderer is. That's really so good. cool. It Wait. has Selena Gomez in it. It's <gasps> so cute. But yeah, I'm, that sounds amazing. It's really good. They started releasing episodes on Hulu. But Ooh. it brings me to the point of what if what if we ever got, went to prison? Knock on wood. I don't want to go. But what if we did? We can create only murders in the prison. Yeah. Uh huh. Pretty good idea. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> we'll see. We could we we could try. Yeah. We, we could start try. opening an investigation. We're like in a courtroom during like a really important <laughs> hearing, and we're like, all right. Can and we get that? We're like asking them questions. We're not even the lawyers. The judge is like, "Who are you two? I'd be like, "Don't worry about it, ma'am." You don't know. Judge Judy, I love your work so much. I bet we could totally get on Judge Judy. Do you think I could ask her to come on the podcast? <laughs> I search, can She's we get Judge icon. Judy? Can you imagine? I can imagine. Guys, like go blow up us. Judge Judy's Instagram and uh, let us know. She has let to have an know. Instagram. I think if, she has a TikTok. But if so. Judge Judy yelled at me, I'd probably cry and never have hope in life again. She's so <laughs> scary. Mm -hmm. She's very yeah. frightening. There'd be no point after that. No point at all. <laughs> anyway, the next mystery is one of the Beach Boys may have witnessed a Manson murder. So, oh. so I will say before I get into this, this one is a little gnarly, a little sad, but we'll, I'll get into it. Just a little warning for anyone who's listening. So, Beach Boy Dennis Wilson's brief connection to the Manson family is well documented. He hosted the Manson family at his own expense for a period of time, spending $100,000 to cover their food and oh health expenses. God. So, he put a lot of money into this. A lot of money. Uh, he even brought Charles Manson into his recording studio where the Beach Boys recorded some songs written by Manson. So they were able to record some songs for him in that studio. Wow. Uh, but Wilson was scared by the Mansons too. And eventually a friend got him out of the situation and the family moved on to their infamous Spawn Ranch dwelling. But what scared Wilson? So we'll find out. Oh. According to fellow Beach Boy Mike Love, Wilson witnessed Charles Manson murder a black man by shooting him in half with an M16 rifle. Oh my then, god. Then, like, later stuffing the body down a well. So, it's extremely graphic that's and disgusting. extremely, yeah, so, wow. So, that's very sad. But the alleged crime was never comported, reported to the police, and no officials have ever heard the story since, so they, no one has found it credible. But the consensus seems to be that Wilson hallucinated the incident while under the influence of LSD. Oh, but I feel like that's a little that's a little, little that's convenient. Like, like I, I, I just for the time. can't believe a trip would be that mm -hmm. sur like realistic. Yeah, I just like that is very hard for me to believe. And another Beach Boy confirmed this. Another Beach Boy confirmed. Mike, well, Mike, did he? He wit. Oh, according to fellow Beach Boy Mike Love, Wilson witnessed the murder. So Wilson oh. must have told. Like, Mike love about Mike love that, but like that's still like a comp, like yeah. some type of confirmation if someone else like believed that happened. Yeah. But wow. the thing is, I'm obviously never been on LSD, anything like that. But I don't know. I feel like you can't hallucinate something like this, and I feel like it's also a little convenient for the police to like, especially with a person of color, for them to like have never report, like got a report, and mm -hmm. two, for them to completely like ignore the situation and just like. I don't know. Brush it, under Brush the it rug. off yeah. as LSD. Yeah. I feel like that's something that's happened it's, then, and it's totally something that could happen now easily, mm -hmm. and it's disgusting. We've talked about this in many other of our true crime cases, but there's so many things the police just, like, brush under the yeah. rug as nothing. Because they just, like, it's mm -hmm. the idea of, like, they don't want to, like, look for those answers or find, like, yeah. the proper And it's even to... more sad for, like, a person of color because they already have enough with exactly. police and brutality that'd exactly. be easy for the police to completely ignore that yeah and two for them to just like be like oh it's just an lsd trip that's convenient for you to say yeah 100 but it, it could literally be the life of like literally yeah, someone who that's died that's crazy oh my god but, do you know if like he worked with him anymore after he like quote no because he was that? scared of them 
Wow. He was scared. I th- yeah, that no, was, I that mean, was that what scared him to a leave. Scarring thing. Mm-hmm. But like that was this like in whoa like yeah. during the endorsement too. I have no idea. Wow. It was some point that like Wilson was still like friends that is with them, and then he started to get kind of weirded out, and then this was wow. the tipping point for him to be like, nope, I'm out. You guys, this isn't good. So wow. yeah, that is so that's crazy. like one of the most like gruesome like upsetting things wow. but awful. yeah we don't know they don't know exactly what it was but i think i have a suspicion that it was real because it'd be so easy for people it's to... it's t- i feel like it's very it's, it is like way too real i i just don't yeah. believe a trip could cause that i much, do not um memory mm-hmm. and it's just very easy to brush it off as that yeah sadly so that's that one and then this next one is that the manson family is linked by an unsolved murder to another bizarre cult So they have another cult connection. So uh, James Sharp, age 15, and Dorian Gall, 19, were found murdered in a Los Angeles alleyway in November 1969, not far from where the Tate LaBianca murders were committed. Mm. And like those murders, uh, Sharp and Gall's involved extreme overkill, a similarly and immediately noted by police investigators. So like Mm. crazy, like just killing spree type thing with them. Wow. Uh, The strangest possible connection to the Mansons, though, is religious. So both Sharp and Gall were involved with a splinter group of Scientology known as the Process Church of the Final Judgment, or the Process for short. Uh, Manson himself was connected to the Process, borrowing some of their ideology for his own cult and maintaining contact with them after his conviction so like so it's a connection he used them as a blueprint to make his own cult. basically and like wow even after being convicted of all of this still continue to talk to those cult members and the other cult wow which is crazy so i feel like i mean even that itself could explain why crazy stuff still happened while he was put away by yeah, his members. That's a that's a great point. And like it's almost like the members that were a part of his cult could have absorbed into that cult at some point. Or oh, like yeah. was like a guess like a um a guardian to them or something. Mm-hmm. Like someone to chap like I don't I don't want to use chaperone. That might not be the right for word, yeah. but it's like something along those lines. That's mm-hmm. crazy. Like I, I feel oh. like since you said it was close to the other um murders, I feel like that is very true because like usually in like true crime cases like this a lot of them are in close proximity to one another oh yeah and like pinpointing what exactly is happening and i feel like it makes sense especially like for like the popularity in like san francisco and like different parts of los angeles for it to be isolated to Mm -hmm. like smaller areas within a big place i guess yeah like it makes sense that it'd be like oh on this street or like this street Mm -hmm. but yeah so whether Sharp and Gall's murders were committed by the Mansons or had anything to do with their religious involvement is unknown. At the case, and the case remains unsolved with no apparent motive. So, like, it's still something that, like, people don't really know what happened, yeah. who killed them, but, like, they have their suspicions mm-hmm. that it was probably the Mansons. So, the Manson family, this is the next one, the Mason, Manson family may have been satanic killers for hire, which is oh. crazy. So, if it's not the CIA behind everything, it must be Satanist. I guess so. Yeah. So there's a conspiracy theory out there that the Manson cult was part of a nationwide network of Satan worshiping assassins for hire. This satanic murder network operating primarily in California, New York, and Texas was supposedly behind the son of Sam killings, as well as the helter skelter crimes of the Mansons, plus oh. numerous other murders at the time. Many of them ritualistic in nature. They hired themselves out to drug dealers and other illegal power brokers, getting not just money out of it, but access to lots of sacrificial victims, too. I know you said this in the beginning, like, about um, they could be, like, sat- satanic killers or CIA people or, like, both. Yeah. But I'm thinking, like, they could probably have done both, Oh, honestly. definitely. Like, I fully believe that they were, like... Um, a cult but i believe i could believe that they had like a side thing going on like that oh definitely but even like thinking you like our cia or like our government that type of stuff there's probably some real shady stuff going on up there too it wouldn't Mm -hmm. i don't know i'm not gonna say it wouldn't be possible for someone in the cia to also be part of the satanic stuff i mean it could like there is corruption inside of that yeah like we don't very very possible Mm -hmm. like it could be the same thing i don't know 
Wow. So that's that theory, which I think is definitely a possibility. I, 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 I'm, yeah, I'm on board like, with that idea. Like, to have such an the, evil mindset, exactly. you would easily especially be able after, to carry out stuff like that. Especially after his ideologies and, like, what he mm-hmm. preached about. Exactly. Sense. Like, it'd be too easy to fall into that mm-hmm. ideas. But our next little case here is a Manson defense attorney vanished during the trial. So, like, his what? defense attorney just, like, vanished during the whole thing. Whoa. So each of the Manson family murders, um, each of the Manson family members tried for the Tate LaBianca murders had their own defense attorney. Ronald Hughes, the lawyer for family member Leslie Van Houten, disappeared on a camping trip during a recess for the trial in November 1970. So mm. there was like a break for this trial and he went on a camping trip and just completely vanished. While he was still what? active, an active ongoing trial. There's a recess. He How goes far on a trip. away was it? Um, it doesn't say where he went. Camping mm-hmm. trip. But I feel like it's like a to national follow. park nearby or something like that. Wow. Mm-hmm. That's so, so suspicious. It is. And then Hughes had last been seen by hikers near the Sespe Hot Springs in Ventura County, California, after his camping conven- companions heated in order to evacuate due to flash floods. They said he was alone and away from the area of the flooding. But when the court reconvened the family's trial on November 30th, 1970, Hughes failed to appear. Police searched mm. the camping area for Hughes after the flooding subsided, and the judge in the case eventually assigned Van Houten a new defense attorney. Hughes, badly, his badly decomposed body was discovered wedged between two boulders oh on March God. 29th, 1971. So the same day, the jury returned the death penalty against all defendants in the Tate LaBianca murder trial. He had to be identified by dental records, and no official cause of death was ever recorded due to the state of his body at the time of discovery. So they found this guy dead. Honestly, though, but, like, good for them for that ruling, though. Mm -hmm. Like, it's just, like, too convenient that, like, he was safe during it, and then all of a sudden he's, like... He starts defending the other side, and he gets mm -hmm. snitched. Wow. So, while most people think Hugh's death was an accidental one, at least one family member, Sandra Good, claimed that he had been killed by Manson followers as retaliation for some slight he has caused Manson during the trial. And then Van Houten received a life sentence for her crimes. Good for these people for standing up against that. That is, yeah, like, so brave and like the adversity of like, yeah. the manson family that's crazy mm-hmm. like good for them for like actually coming out but wow. there's one more case do you think we yeah. have time for yeah it? we got time okay so Go this is it. our last one our last little mini mystery for this so uh the murder of charles manson's uncle remains unsolved so charles manson's uncle dead oh so charles manson's biological family was a mess born in ohio to a teen mother he was raised by his aunt and uncle and he never knew his real father but his birth mother did sue a man named Walker Scott for child support two years after Charles was born. Mm. So Scott's brother, Darwin Scott, would therefore have been Manson's uncle by blood, which makes him, which makes his 1969 murder in Ashland, Kentucky, all the more suspicious. Like many of Manson's known and alleged California victims, Scott was killed by multiple stab wounds, and there was a group of hippies in town at the same time, led mm. by a man called Preacher. Who preacher. Had preacher. Oh That's my so creepy. God. And this preacher had been ha- handing out LSD to locals until their house got burned Literally, down. it's him. It's, it's literally, literally him. him. It's literally him. So all of that happened while Manson was on parole and out of touch with his parole officer. So it's very likely that out was him. Out of touch? How can you be out of touch with a parole officer? It's Don't all, you have a thing it all on your adds up. All, all adds up. It's literally all saying, hey, it's him. So... While the connection may be circumstantial, the similarities are intriguing, especially considering that Scott's murder, like like so many others with possible connections to Manson, remains unsolved. So, like, it's wow. they still call it unsolved, but clearly it's pointing to him. Clearly, like, Colleen Preacher handing out LSD to the locals and it's a group of hippies when that's, like, his whole, like, yeah. thing. Like, that's the whole point and, like, thing in his cult. That's crazy. It's clearly him. But, wow. Yeah. I, wow. But, that is crazy. I don't, but what do you think? Like, what, what stuff are you leaning towards? Was it Satanists? Was it CIA? Was it just people on LSD yeah. tripping real hard? I don't know. Well, first, overall, like, I had no idea about, like, all of this. Like, truly, like, I have always heard, like, talks of Manson, but I've never yeah. really fully understood the, like, full amount of, like, what his mm-hmm. terrible actions were and, like, the crazy ideologies he had set in yeah. for him. Um, I could believe, like, 
it could be like a lot of the theories a lot Mm -hmm. of everything yeah um the one i'm a little like iffy on is the cia one just because like i do think it's possible it could be Mm -hmm. both like with the idea of like the satanist and also the cia being involved as well yeah i could see them being involved at some point but for being like the full cause of his like oh yeah mental spiral i don't know but also the lsd thing so it's 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 weird how many connections could possibly be made out of this and it could literally be everything i feel like even if it was something cia related it could be after he had already become like pretty like significant Mm -hmm. within this group and they're yeah. like, oh, well, if you're doing these illegal things, like, we're going to be in on this, but mm. we're having control of this. We're having control of the, like, oh, it's yeah. It's like a test for us, I guess. Yeah. Like, they find it illegal, just, like, but they're going to control it. To think about, wow. I, 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 don't, I don't know. know. What do you think? Like, what's I your... feel like it could be a CIA, like the thing I just said, like, mm-hmm. it was, like, mildly them coming in at the end, or I feel like definitely some satanic stuff, because I feel like they had some really dark stuff going on and i feel like to be like that dark and like a satanic mindset yeah. along with drugs you're not in for a good time I, I don't think like i just feel like a lot of indifference right now it's like mm-hmm. very interesting like i just feel like a lot of them are possible but also like yeah. only some are possible then i'm also like just the idea that he had all these ideologies and did all these like horrible things it's just this feeling of like yeah it like it's just strange like I don't even know how to, it, any of it makes sense. Like, I just can't imagine, like, being able to, like, completely blindly follow someone and just do all these crazy Heinous acts. things, yeah. Like, I feel like they'd already have to be in a crazy place, and I feel like it also changes my perception of, like, what the 60s into the 70s were, because I feel like people do paint it as, like, oh, it's free hippie time, it's peaceful, but and then you have love, people Like, fully, like, dressed that. as, like, hippies, like, coming to these, like, places, and, like, that very last case in Kentucky with the uncle, like... That is terrifying. Just followed with a preacher? Yeah. Oh, wow. Like, it's all whack. But in conclusion, the brutal nature of the murders committed by the Manson family, in addition to the fact that some of the victims were celebrities, touched upon some of the deepest fears of the American psyche. Mm -hmm. So the idea that you might not even be safe at home, for one, and the idea that even good people are a few moves away from committing unspeakable crimes is horrific. That Mm -hmm. anyone on the random street, you're like, oh, they're a good person, and they can change an instant like yeah that's crazy so they also cemented the idea in popular culture that the free love movement of the 1960s wasn't free at all and there are plenty of conspiracies and things left unknown in this case that leave charles manson and the manson family murders a mystery that will haunt those impacted forever so yeah that's the case and i do want to thank uh ranker.com and smithsonian magazine for all the information from this but there's a ton more stuff out there to oh, do with I'm all sure. this like yeah. this is like grazing the edge of what all of this is wow so yeah that's wow. it <laughs> that's all it. right wow. wow that was like a great insight into all of it mm-hmm. like i like that was real that was like really good insight throughout yeah. all of that wow oh it's so just all, oh, yeah all right well yeah i guess we will see you guys next week we'll for see you guys. my case for and i guess Manuel. the charles the the Manson family. Yes, the Manson family. A, a mystery. mystery. Thank yeah. you guys so much for watching. Thank you. And we will see you again next week. See you next week. Bye. Bye. Bye.